Folks, I want to tell you what I've been feeling. You can keep playing. Because I don't know where I'm going. Let me tell you what I've been feeling. Let me tell you what I've been seeing, for that matter. As I've been in prayer, I feel it and I see it that there's, for lack of a better way to put it, a double shift of sorts that's taking place even now. And I need you to hear and understand what I'm saying and where I'm coming from and what God would have you to get from it. I just feel like maybe sharing that with you now and no telling how far we'll take it. But what I mean by a double shift is this, a twofold change. And this shift is a transitional shift, meaning that it'll take you from one place to another if you get into alignment with this shift as it takes place. And this is what I mean, that there is a negative shift in the atmosphere. It takes no discernment, no spirituality whatsoever to look at your nation and your cities and all of the sorts and determine that there's a decline right now, that there's spiritual wickedness increasing, that bad things are increasing, that perversion is increasing, that morality is in essence going away, that what folks used to hold in high esteem and righteousness seemingly is a, is a non-issue anymore in most folks' lives. It's no mystery. But what I think that a lot of the church maybe doesn't see is the flip side of that coin, that God God's going to one-up the enemy and he's going to do it even so even now. And what I'm saying to you is this, is I'm confident in this much, is there is a decline in spirituality and in darkness and gross immorality and sin. And there is a decline. There is things going down and getting nastier and getting darker. But I see the Lord looking unto a people that are willing to get on board with this transition and say, God, I'm willing to do what you want to do. I'm not going to look not one more time to the school house to invite prayer back in as if they're going to do it apart from the Holy Ghost. I'm not knocking on the White House's door for the answer. What I'm going to do, Jesus, is I'm going to say, look, I see within me that there's some stuff that needs to change. That right here is number one, God, I'm presenting to you, me, that I see that things are getting worse, but I see that you're wanting to do something great. And if that great thing is going to come to pass, God, I present it to you, me. Do with me what you want to do. Do in my life what you want to do. Work a work in me that's beyond measure. I'm not looking to my neighbor to be the one to step it up. Look unto me, Lord. Here I am. Send me. It is written. Folks, we got to look at ourselves right now and say, where am I right now? Real talk. Because I'm telling you, I've seen it. I've seen it in prayer. I feel it. I know that it's something that's happening. But I'm telling you, as this thing happens, it's like a left hook to the mouth from the enemy. But God says that I'm doing a greater work than the enemy. That I'm going to do more than what the enemy is going to do. That I will have the last word. That my people are victorious in me. If they would but believe that the work I intend to do is greater, they will find victory in me, says the Lord. And I'm asking you to look into your own heart right now. Examine yourself right now and determine, do you really want your family saved? Do you really want your loved ones that are lost brought into Jesus Christ? Do you really want to see your church revived and many come in and come unto the Lord? Do you really want to see your nation repent of her backslidings and her perversions and put away the wickedness and the deeds that are not right and not good? Do you really want to see prayer restored in the schoolhouses and kids not being taught perversion and doctrinations of the devil while they're in that place? Do you really want to see it? Because if you want to see it, you got to know that God's ready to do a move to counter attack the enemy, but you've got to be willing to get on board with what he's doing. In the Bible, any great move of God that you saw was always in a time of spiritual decline and national decline and an increase of immorality and things that shouldn't be and that didn't belong in the world and didn't belong in life. And it's in those times that you would see God do a work and do a move. You can play as long as you want to. You can play the whole time. It's at your discretion at this point. We're just driving. time there was a great move of God. Nations were in a spiritual decline. Cities were in a spiritual decline. Homes were in a spiritual decline. 
immorality was overflowing. Great and nasty things were happening. There was a disregard for God and the things of God. And in this position of ruin where it seemed as if everything had crumbled and no matter our efforts and seemingly all of our prayers and all that we could do or think we could do or whatever to, to maybe build things back. Whatever it is we think we can do it seems futile a lot of times. No matter how hard we try, no matter how hard we pray or fast or whatever else, it seems like, God, oh, it's just getting worse. But folks, I'm telling you, it's in those moments that God raises up a standard against the works of the enemy. Let me tell you about my own life. Folks, for seven years of my salvation, I struggled with perversion, not looking at stuff on the internet that I shouldn't. Not opening the emails that I knew wouldn't have anything good in it. Seven years, I would fast 10 and 12 days at a time, pray four and five hours at a time, plead with God or affirm my identity and anything I could find in the book to do, it didn't work. It helped sometimes, but it didn't work. I was seemingly entangled. And I look at this nation and I look at our cities and they're in, in a sense entangled. That this nation is bound up by some sort of perversion. And no matter how much the church seems to pray. And no matter how much the church seems to press in. And, and try to lift up the needs and pleas to God. To do something of deliverance and to bring people out of it. It just seems to be getting worse. But let me tell you what happened for me. Is the exact same answer that's going to happen for the nation and for the cities. Is when I begin to look and say, God, I'm the problem. That I'm the issue. That I've got the issue. Then when I begin to recognize my own depravity and that the issue rests upon me. That it wasn't anybody else's fault. It wasn't God's fault. It wasn't my neighbor's fault. It wasn't anybody else's issue but mine. It was easy to look at my neighbor and say, they're worse. They need prayer. Poor pitiful us. Now let's look at ourselves for a minute because I'm telling you the moment that I looked at myself and said God I lay my life down I'm sorry for all I've allowed I'm sorry for what's done I don't know how to fix this I don't know what to do that when I prayed that prayer the deliverer came in and he broke bands of bondage he set me free he took away chains he lifted me to a place he caused me to walk in righteousness he made my affections like his affections that of holiness he caused me to be like Jesus in an instant and I'm telling you folks, if you want to see your nation fixed, if you want to see your cities fixed, if you want to see your family saved, instead of begging God one more day to do a work independent of something he's looking for from you, why don't you look at your own heart and say, God, I've got some depravity here. I've been lazy in prayer. I've not sought your face in a way that says I really don't want them to go to hell. I've not laid my life down for the gospel. It's no wonder there's been no move. It's no wonder there's still lost. It's no wonder the schools are perverted. It's no wonder the nation's crumbling and turning into hell. It's no wonder. But God, right now, I look at me. I look inside me, and I'm saying, God, do something in this one here. I want to see you work in that one, and I want to see you work in that one. But I'm not responsible for them. God, I present unto you me right now, and I'm asking you to do a work in me right now that causes change to come. And I'm believing as the people of God. I know it says in 2 Chronicles 7, a text that's out of context for new covenant believers, but it says if you would seek his face, turn from your wicked ways, etc., then he'll heal your land. He'll hear you from heaven. That's what it says. And in like manner, I'm telling you folks, if you would seek his face, if you would say, God, I'll lay my life down. I'm sick and tired of them being lost. I sacrifice me for their sake. Then God's going to begin to move when he sees somebody that says, you know what? I'm going to move on their behalf. I can't stand by and not answer. I saw a prayer from Moses in the Old Testament. I'm reading the Bible in 90 days. I just felt like doing it. And I'm telling you, I've, I've seen a prayer from Moses in which he cries out to God, we need you to do a work. We got this issue. We got that problem. And according to your words, you said that you were for your name's sake, preserve your people. And I'm asking that you move. I'm asking that you deliver. And God said, according to, according to what you've prayed, let 
let it be done. And I'm telling you folks, why? Because Moses said, God, don't forget what you said. I see my problem. I see that I'm the issue. I'm not, I'm not even speaking for them, God. I come to you as the man of God and say, I've got the problem. I'm not speaking for Haley. I'm not speaking for Brandon. I'm not speaking for Brother Ed. I'm speaking for Jared Morrell right now. God, you see that I've been lazy. You see the days that I've flipped through Facebook far too long while my family was going to hell. You see, God, way too many days that I could have been in prayer for my neighbor knowing good and well they were going to hell. But I said, God, I'd rather put my feet up in the recliner and do me. You see that, God. I won't speak for them, but I ask that you work there. God, look at me and do this work for your name's sake, God. For your name's sake, do this thing. I didn't come here with the intent to get crazy. But folks, there is a shift. Believe me, you may not see it. Ask God. There is a shift taking place even now. And over the next few months, you're going to see a radical decline in morality in America. And over the next few months thereafter, you're going to see a radical decline in morality in America. And over the next few months thereafter, you're going to see a radical Radical decline of immorality in America. And come fall of 2020, you'll be concerned with sending your, school, your kids to school more than you are now. I said by the fall, in 10 months from now, 2020, you won't want to leave the house in some manner and in some way. You won't let your kids outside of the yard if you can't lay eyes on them because of the condition of the nation. I'm telling you that right now, we're about to see a slippery slope of immorality in America. But I'm telling you, just like in times of old, when it was a time of ruin, when there was things crumbling, when there was things faltering, and there was absolutely no other answer but divine intervention, that there was no other solution but that God would reach his hand into the situation and say, I'm going to lift my people up for my name's sake. I'm going to exalt them just because I've called them by my name. I'm not going to allow them to find ruin or to find defeat. In like manner, that as this decline has taken place, that God has offered a transitional shift for the people of God that if you would but say God I want on board with this thing if it costs me my life and it will cost you everything you say God I want on board with this thing I don't want to hold back not a bit not a little bit God I want to get on board with it cause me to be one that's fervent cause me to be one that's on fire for you that, that lays his life down for the gospel I want on board with this shift so that when I have a one on one encounter and that's something else that I see that there's going to be these folks that say, God, I'm taking hold of this and I'm running with it. I'm not doing nominal Christianity no more. Not another day of just fooling around and playing games. I'm not interested in that. That as we take hold and say, God, this is me. Let's do it. Let me tell you something, folks. As something shifts, that means that it moves. And if you don't move with the shift, you don't get on board with the shift. And I'm telling you right now, you can take my word for it or not. You can seek God about it or not. As this shift takes place and God begins to do an exalting work for the church that if you don't shift with it then you will fall by the wayside and be yet another tear. You will be like unto the weeds that there's just very little profit to you in the kingdom of God. That God's calling you to say God I want all that you've got to offer. I want to get on board with what you're doing. I can't stand idly by and play church games anymore. I'm not going to skip out on prayer meeting knowing it's the lifeline of this church and this nation I'm not going to do things my way, God. I know I could get out of bed 30 minutes earlier to hit my knees and to fall on my face and intercede for my family and for my land and for my city and for my people and for my church and for my kids. God, I know I could, but I haven't been. I'm telling you, there's a lot of guilty folks in the house besides me that knows good and well that you've got a lot more to offer God. And God's called you to bigger and God's called you to better. And right now is the accepted time. Go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Folks, I'm telling you. And the good news is I don't have to convince you that things are getting worse and worse and worse. 
But I am telling you that they're going to get worse faster as time progresses. Like a baby coming from the womb of its mother. I'm telling you, as soon as you see the hair, you've got a baby. And there's hair. I'm telling you, in a moment, in an instant, you're going to see the baby. And folks, as things get darker, as things get worse, and they will get worse, that's not, and it shouldn't be, an indicator of what God is or isn't doing. Because Jesus said that as the, 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 the atmosphere is darker, as the lives and the communities and the world is darker, then you as the church should shine brighter in those scenarios. So I'm not beyond believing that in some manner to get to such a dark place isn't the will of God. Because through that grace abounding, through that light shining through the church, that avenue that allows us to really be seen, there's going to be a sword that divides dark from light. A sword that says this is right, this is wrong. It's getting really gross, but it's getting so gross that when the church takes hold of this shift and is elevated to a place and walks in this place of, of what we were really called to walk in the whole time, then it's going to be very clear. There's going to be cutting. There's going to be very cut and dry. No gray area. This is right. This is wrong. Now I'm telling you, the wrong over here, the darkness will still call good evil and evil good. But I'm telling you, it won't be hard to understand the cut and dry. Isaiah 43. I want to read to you a word, and folks, I'm telling you, this ought to be a word of hope. It ought to be a message that causes us to know that as, as bad as things are getting and as weighed down as I am by circumstance and what troubles my heart when I see the depravity of the nation and the falling away of the churches and the falling away of families and the falling away of everything moral as it, as it might weigh us down and concern us and grieve us that if we have the right perspective then it won't grieve us that we'll know that as there's a decline God's doing a greater thing that as the enemy's bringing the world down God's saying I'm raising up a standard that as the devil's doing something in the lives of the people, the church can't allow that to bring us into discouragement. We can't allow that to cause us to feel defeated and say, not one more day, God, where are you? Are you going to move? Are you going to help us? That can't be our mindset. We've got to know that as the devil is shifting now, God is doing a greater shift, and we have the opportunity to get on board with what God's doing, but it will require that you lay your life down for the gospel. Isaiah 43, I'm really going to read it this time. Verse 19, and the Lord spoke through the prophet Isaiah saying, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. When shall it spring forth? Now. Now is always God's time. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In other words, I will make a way. I will open up avenues in which there seem to be no other way. I will bring waters into a place that was formerly parched. I'm going to do something right now that was, it was going to be an overcoming of a ruinous situation that God's going to do something right now that, that only God can do. That it might seem like our prayers have been futile and we've wrestled with God day in and day out to no avail. But I'll tell you, God's heard every prayer we prayed from the very beginning. The first word we uttered unto the Lord, he took it very seriously. And God's seeing now that there's a decline taking place and now is the accepted time for a new thing to happen that God's taking the people and only those people that are willing to get on board with what God's doing. Let me tell you something. Just because you say, hey, I'm Christian and you call yourself by the name of Jesus does not mean that you're walking in the will of God. It does not mean that you're right and doing things the way God would have you to. And I'm telling you right now, God's calling a people, ultimately a spirit-filled people and saying, I've got something for you, something greater. It's going to cost you, but if it's worth it to you, you can be on board with what's happening. And I'm telling you, when you witness to people one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be effective from this moment forward. I said, when you witness to people one-on-one -on -one and you sow in the hearts, you'll see yokes broken and lives changed. I don't ultimately see masses and majorities saved by the local churches. I do see that happening, but I feel as if God's reserved that privilege ultimately for people that he's taken out of the world 
people of influence, people with a name for darkness out of the world and positioning them in a platform for the name of Jesus. And through them, many will be saved at one time. But for people like you and I that don't underestimate what God's doing, that when you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter at the Panda, I said when you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter at the Stalin Station, when you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter about Jesus, you're going to start to notice if you're one that got on board with the shift of God, you're going to start to notice that things are really happening when I talk to people. The yokes are being broken. Hearts are being broken. And people are turning unto the Lord. That something really is happening. But folks, it's not going to happen on your terms. It's not going to happen if you lay around on the couch all the time watching the Gilmore girls while your family goes to hell. I said it's not going to happen until you lay your life down and say, God, I've had enough of sin. The world perish. I've had enough of sin. The nation go to hell. I've had enough of sin. And God, take me. Do with me as you will. I lay my life down. Whatever it looks like, let it be for your glory. Amen. Folks, the prophet Amos, when he spoke, he spoke at a time in which there was relative peace. There was relative prosperity in some manner, but the people had turned from the things of God. And that to me sounds awfully familiar, that if you look in our nation right now, there's relative peace in some manner. There's relative prosperity in some manner, but ultimately as a whole, even though we're called so supposedly a Christian nation, that ultimately as a whole, that that people have turned from God. They've put God out of their lives. There's no interest in Jesus Christ. There's no interest in having him in the school. There's no interest in having him in the courthouse. There's no interest in having him in the home. I said there's no interest in having him in the church. The only time I ever saw Jesus upset was with religion. We don't need another day of religion. I would to God that the Savior of the world would come into Kingdom Life Church and flip tables and say, what's going on in your heart today? You profess me, you call me by now. And I'm telling you, he made stop number one at the platform. Why even do it for not one done his way? <clears throat> Folks, I'm telling you, no doubt, there's a shift happening. And it's a double shift. And it's a transitional shift. And you don't get on it by default. You don't roll with the punches just because you call him by name. You get on it because you've said, God, I surrender. And what I fear is, is what surrender looks like in the United States of America in the church is not what surrender really looks like in the book. I will say that surrender doesn't necessarily look like heavy burdens and heavy yokes and heavy weights because that's not Jesus. But it does say, God, consecration. I don't want the things of sin. I lay all of this mess down. I want you. You're the love of my life. I return to my first love. I give you me. And the irony of it is, is it's easier than religion. And it's the only thing that will suffice. Folks, I want you to hear me well and let there be no mistake about it. That in your cities in the coming months, you're going to start to see things shifting and changing. And I'm telling you this, that it might not look like great changes all at once. There might be small enough here and small enough there to where you don't bat an eye, but we should. Because collectively, all of these seemingly small things are going to amount to great change when it's all said and done. I saw a... Facebook post somebody had made saying we no longer serve military or veterans here at this restaurant. I'm thinking, why? 
Why? I watched an interview one time on a news channel. And I've seen all the talk of Allah that you can hear on this news channel and it's okay. But the very instant you hear the name of Jesus, it's cut. I've seen grown men dressed in makeup and, and feathers and devil horns and pantyhose and high heels. Teaching the kids in the public schoolhouses their perverted doctrines. I did a message regarding America a few weeks back. And after leaving, one of my kids said, they told us about the five pillars of Islam just the other day. That is not a morale baby. <laughs> Folks, this is real talk, man. Seriously. I was praying yesterday morning. I felt the grievance of my heart. I felt a weight weighing down on me and could see such nastiness that's going to begin to unfold. I'm not talking about what you've experienced thus far. I'm not talking about to the magnitude of what you've seen thus far. It's taking a step up in a greater way. And again, like I said before, that it's going to happen more frequently and more often. But it's going to be greater at the same time. So you're going to see a greater magnitude of perversion. You're going to see a greater magnitude of unrighteousness. But again, as the people of God, we've got to have the correct perspective. We've got to know that God is throwing a hook that's harder than the one the enemy threw. And he says, I'm going to raise up a standard against what the enemy has sown. Then I'm going to do a greater thing than what the enemy has sown. Then I'm going to do more for my people, for my name's sake in this final hour so that there's no mistake about it that Jesus Christ is on the throne and there's no greater name than he. That every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'm saying that many are going to do it in the darkest hour through the avenue of the light shine through the church of Jesus Christ that we as a people if we are willing my concern is we're not all willing that everybody hearing me now is not all willing that we just as soon go through the mechanics of what it looks like to go to church we just as soon go through the motions so that we can say God I was faithful to at least attend but God's not called you just to attend but this is the house of God he's called you to come and worship he's called you to come and lay your life down he's called you to come and serve him if we're not doing that then we're spinning our wheels I said if we're not doing that we're wasting our time that Jesus has called us to something greater for his glory Amen. next time it may be the trumpet why are you right now as I was praying yesterday and it could have been this morning I pray so much specifically on the weekends that it's a blur. But as I was praying, I was concerned with the people, most specifically those that would hear this word. And my concern was because I could see a people affected by what was said and considering what was said but as they walked out of the door they felt the rays of sunshine on their back they said man I can't wait to do what I'm planning to do today and as they go about they find themselves at the restaurant placing their order they've soon forgotten what the message said they go about their business they go home they prop up on the couch take a Sunday afternoon nap and again they've soon forgotten what was said before you know it Monday's here and the message that was spoken is long forgotten there's little trace of anything that was said in their minds no change in their hearts and we go through the motions another time another week again and I don't want to personally go through the motions I'm going to be honest it would be a lot easier to plug into a healthy ministry that I'm aware of and just worship God and serve and do all I can to help them than to come and spin my wheels and I don't want to see you spin your wheels or waste your time with Jesus that God's given us a grace and, and such a grace to take hold of, to step into the things that he really has called us to step into, that it would be a shame to get on board with the majority of places that say church on the front of the building and not do what God's called us to do. Because I'm telling you, the majority, at least of what I see in Bristol, is not doing the will of God, and I don't want to get on board with that. I believe that God has given unto this people a grace that says, do your 
want it or do you not? I've brought you out of religion. I've brought you out of death. I've brought you across the river. I raised up stones of memorial so you would remember. I've promised to do greater things and I will do greater things. If you would but fall on the face, on your face before the commander of the Lord and say, I give you my life. If you would but serve him and worship him, consecrate your life unto him, then in the coming days you will see a move of God. But this shift will happen with or without you. And you've got a choice to make. I've got way too many, way too many statements and admonitions and reproofs on my record that didn't wind up good for the hearer to feel good about what I'm saying right now. But I hope that this people says, I'm not going to be like the statistic. I'm not going to be another number that was offered a great thing from God and failed. That I've cried and I've cried and I've cried for my kids. They're not saved. And I've looked for God to move independent of me. And God's looked to you whether you know it or not to look at your heart. You say, I want my coworkers saved. I witness they don't listen. And God's looking to you to say, what are you willing to pay? Lay your life down. Lay your life down. I've got family. I've got co-workers that I'm concerned about right now. And I'm convinced after what the Lord has shown me that there will be no shift or change in their life until I get on board with the shift that God is bringing in our life. Now, God's not holding over our heads our salvation of our family and our friends and our co-workers saying, if you can jump high enough, it's yours. It's not what's happening. God is simply saying, this is the avenue in which you will find effective deliverance for all of your prayers, that you will find effective witnessing and effective sowing. If you really want to see these things come to pass, then you've got to step into the realm that I've called you to walk in. You can't do it over here. You can't do it this way. I'm asking you to align with what I've called you to align with, to put on what I've called you to put on, not for your, your harm, but for your good. How many prayers have you prayed for your kids? How many prayers you pray for your kids, your co-workers? What if God says Jesus Christ is the provision, he's the answer for everything, every problem in the world, every salvation issue, he's the answer for it all. All I'm asking you to do is get in the wagon with him and ride. And most of the church don't want to do it that way. They say, God, I don't really want to ride. Why? Because if I get in that wagon, I'll miss the game. I say, God, if I get in that wagon, I'll be late for this. Or I won't get to go to that movie. Or I won't get to do that, though. No. Then you don't want to see your nation change. You don't want to see your church revived. You don't want to see your family saved. Because I'm telling you, the chariot of the Lord in which Jesus Christ rides in is the only thing that's going to bring help to your nation. It's the only thing that's going to bring help to the people in your life that need help. It can't be done on our terms. It can't be done on our way. Folks, and I'm telling you again, and I'll reiterate it over and over if I must, that there is undoubtedly a shift taking place in darkness. You watch. Every few months, you watch and see if you don't notice how much worse things have gotten. You watch the technology and see if it doesn't align with Antichrist spirit. You watch the government and see if they don't align with Antichrist spirit. You watch the schoolhouses and see if they don't grow increasingly in the Antichrist spirit. And tell me that it ain't getting darker quickly. But at the same time, if we really do doubt that God won't have the final word, if we really, as the people of God, don't believe that that Jesus Christ is going to raise up a standard and say, I will have the final word. That the enemy will not have the last word. That I will do a greater thing than the enemy will do. I'm looking for a people. I said, I'm looking in the earth to find faith. I'm looking for a people that's willing to get on board and say, send me, Lord. I lay my life down. I don't care what it costs. Let's do it. Is it you?
asking you to consider what I'm saying. Y'all pray with me. Father, we just, we need to work here. Jesus, we need a move of your spirit right now. I'm asking that you break yokes right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking that you do a fresh thing. I'm asking that you touch hearts and that you touch lives, God, because we know you're the deliverer. We know you're the answer. We know you're the solution. We know you're the source. And I'm asking God that right now in the name of Jesus, you do a fresh thing. God, we know that out of Zion's hill comes the help for the church. Say not that the former days shall be greater than the end. We said, say not that the early rain shall be greater than the latter for I shall restore it to you says the Lord the years that the locust and the palmer worm and the canker worm and the caterpillar has devoured and my people shall be as an end sign as the favor in the midst of a perverse generation for my grace is sufficient for you says the Lord and my strength is made perfect in weakness call unto the Lord Jesus Christ this day help Lord God move in our hearts break away the complacency break away Self. Help us, God, to get a hold of what you're doing, to not miss this thing as it's moving. God, we want to take hold of the works of Jesus Christ. We want to see our family saved once and for all. We want to see yokes broken once and for all. God, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I said enough is enough. God, nobody wants to rise early on their day off and come do church games. God, we want to come and serve you. And when we leave this place, we leave a blaze so that when we minister, folks get saved, folks get healed, folks get delivered. God, I'm asking, have mercy on me. Search my heart. Search my mind. Search my life. Break away everything unrighteous. Do a thing in me, God, and then move on and do a work in the rest. decision and then find that the train has far gone beyond you because when the shift shifts you must get on board with the shift but the Lord is doing a new thing in this hour and he's bringing rivers to dry places and making a way in the wilderness for the church and he's calling up to you to purpose it within your heart to say God I've got to have your way I've got to have it your way. I've got to see my family saved, God, once and for all it must be. You call the shots your Lord. I've bought with a price. This life is not my own. It's not up to me anymore. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you, if you need special prayer, you know what you need. But I'm hitting the altar for me, my family, the church, our cities, the schools, our kids, our lost loved ones in this nation. Because the nation that forgets God will be turned into hell and you don't want your kids going to school in hell. I encourage you to meet me at the altar and spend time with Jesus.